Hey folks, welcome to yet another episode of Talking Tech with Travis, where today we'll be, we will be discussing how you can unlock your data with generative AI. Stop talking to me about your widget, start talking to me about my operating environment and how you bring it all together. I am joined today with Tobias Turnstrom from Starbur Starburst. He is the Chief Product Officer. Tobias, welcome. How are you doing today? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you for having me, Travis. Of course, of course. So for our listeners who may not be familiar with Starburst, could you give us a little insight about who you are and the great work that you guys are doing over there? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's uh, So we're the uh, open lake house company and really having a lake house is all about making it easy for you to query, ingest and, and manage your data that, that resides in your lake. And in Lakehouse, you can think of as uh, the new data warehouse. We see a lot of customers moving out of legacy data warehouses, both in the cloud and on-premises, actually, into more of a Lakehouse architecture. Uh, let's, let's dive right in. Uh, Tobias, as, as I am sure you are aware, uh, the industry is buzzing about generative AI. Uh, you know, I've done a sev several of these episodes talking about infrastructure for generative AI, talking about uh, NVIDIA GPU accelerated servers, you know, talked about networking, talked about storage. And something that, uh, you know, I think sometimes doesn't get the discussion that it deserves is, when we're discussing making generative AI work in general and generative AI work for enterprises is the data management discussion. And, you know, our, uh, our experience has been that Customers, especially enterprise customers, can can really get an awesome outcome utilizing a smaller mo model if they have the right data and it's prepared the correct way. And that's something that uh, you all over at Starbur Starburst are are working on helping customers with. Yeah, and I think it's it's the first step there is really having the right data. Like once you have the data sets, then you can train your models and you can build build what you need in order to make your, your Gen AI solution, you know, helpful, right? Yeah. But if you don't have your, the right data, it's kind of mute. And, and often the problem is that the data is spread out in different silos. Some is in some operational store here. You know, some is in some data warehouse over there. Some might sit in the lake here. There might be multiple lakes. You might be using AWS, you know, GCP and Azure. Maybe you have an on-prem lake. Maybe you have Hadoop. Uh, and that's really where we come in and, and help is to make sure that you have a unified way of querying your data and, and also governing and securing it, because that's the other side of this. You have to make sure that you know, getting all of this data out, but that the right people get to see it, especially in an enterprise setting. Yeah, it's, it's really critical. Um, we've talked you know, a, a lot about data gravity um, we've done some surveys of, of our customer base and, and something like 80, 84% of customer critical or customer unique data, as, or, or let me say enterprise critical or enterprise unique data still resides on premises. And, um, you know, the, that data has been built up over, you know, years and de in some cases decades. And we've been partnering together um, with Starburst to, to deliver the Dell Data Lake House, where customers can query all data across the enterprise, regardless of data type or location. And that really you know, makes customers more efficient. It re reduces time to insight. It optimizes cost and performance. And it's, you know, it, it's a really um, difficult challenge for customers that if solved well can yield huge results how did uh, how did this functionality come to be and why is it so important to kind of the the, the central um, capabilities of starburst the company and starburst the product well it depends on how far back you go you know starburst uh, what we build is based on the open source platform trino uh, we were started in in, in facebook um, you know over a decade ago it was really about querying Facebook's absolutely massive data lake. And they looked at it as this is Facebook's data warehouse, 
right? They have they have a little bit of data over there at Facebook. Yeah, it turns out. I think the last public <laughs> figure I know of is 355 petabytes, but I'd imagine it's quite a bit more by now. Um, and it seemed clear that it's it's not only in, in one place that you need to do this. There was also, I would say, a lot of, you know, you used to have data warehouse or we still have the data warehouses. And data warehouses are very nice, I will say. You know, highly structured data, you can handle massive amounts of data uh, and, um, you know, quite beautiful querying uh, using SQL, which I happen to love. Um, and um, and it went, but the main problem with the data warehouse is generally the cost and scalability. I try to buy a data warehouse and and shove 355 petabytes into it. It's going to be a, a you know hard thing to do, both from a yeah. cost and, and tech perspective. And then you had the whole Hadoop Hive ecosystem uh, that was built, that was uh, you know thought of as as solving this, but it actually became quite complex. And and that's really where this comes from. Is I want that same data warehouse experience, fully governed, SQL querying. But I want it against my lake and also being able to, to combine it with data that actually doesn't sit in the lake yet, right? So federated query to, for example, you know, a system like Oracle or SQL Server. But that's really the root of where it comes from. And that's what we provide with Starburst is, is Trino. We have a, a bunch of optimizations available in the Data Lakehouse appliance from Dell. Um, and then being able now to connect that directly to the lake that you might already have, or you probably already have, and start making, you know, running your queries immediately, if you will, as well as connecting it to other systems. Yeah, and it's it's a critical part of the workflow. It makes, you know, generative AI work better. Um, customers are, are, are often asking us, you know, how do I get up and running? How do I get time to value? And you know we've worked with you with the the Dell Data Lake House. We've worked with other other partners like Nvidia to bring forward things like the Dell Validated Design for Gen AI. And uh, I'd be curious to to hear from you, Tobias. Uh, once you do have that foundation in place, once you've kind of you know got access to all the critical data, you've got the right infrastructure in place, whether that be on prem or in the cloud. We we obviously favor on prem for for many, many reasons. Um, what kind of workloads are, are, are you all seeing that uh, you know, customers can, can really um, use to um, generate enterprise value and do it very quickly? I think it's, there's three main use cases, as, as you might imagine. So one is obviously what, what you led into with the title of this program, which is AI, right? Training either, it doesn't necessarily have to be generative AI, for sure generative AI, but also training other types of models or, or using both, I would say both training, but also using the data for scoring. Um, the other obvious use case is dashboards, right? Mm. Every, every company runs on a bunch of dashboards. Uh, and the third one is, is more of an in-application uh, experience. So you have some probably custom enterprise app uh, and you need to use this data inside this app uh, to drive some workflow, to drive some efficiency. So that, that's the other, uh, I would say, typical example. I will say there is, um, there is clearly gaining momentum and interest in, in running things on premises, just from a pure cost perspective. So we see quite a bit of interest from customers. And that's I, I, at least the thing I love, uh, or one of the things I should say that I love with the Dell Data Lakehouse appliance is the whole ease of use. Like you can imagine you have a lake that already exists on you know, object storage from Dell, and then you buy the appliance, you put it on the same network, you can now start giving people permissions to use the, to go through Starburst query engine, to query that existing lake. You didn't move any data around, you're just yeah, connecting yeah. to the existing lake, but you get a way better experience than what you had previously on that lake. Yeah, you know, it, it's 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 a great example. And, you know, the, what we've seen with customers, many customers, is that there is a tremendous amount of enterprise knowledge or enterprise intellectual cap, capital captured in things like knowledge bases. So you got a bunch of files, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting on a, a Dell PowerScale device. Or you got a bunch of, you know, uh, you have the data lake, lake house sitting on a Dell object device. And, you know, you, you're able to um, run large language models, maybe something like Llama 2 on premises with a XC9680 with NVIDIA GPUs in it. 
it's my, what I'm seeing customers lean more and more into, and I'd love your your perspective on it is rag, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to customize the model. I have this information. I can use rag to to get up and going. I'd love to to hear about how how you all can help with that specific workflow. For sure, we're working on some things that I, maybe I can't share right now, but um, well, I'll have to I'll have to bring you back when you can then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please do, please do. No, but I would say the common thing is if uh, you know RAG is uh, obviously you're using some sort of um, uh, vector database, and what the most typical thing we see uh, with our customers is simply joining results from that vector database with the lake, right? So you yep. can now combine these and actually use that. Um, Obviously, this is not in this case for training; it's for serving data. So you have That's right. That's right. you've trained um, or you've created these vectors, and you're using that for your for your augmented experience. And now you're immediately taking the results of that and querying the lake and giving a more rich experience uh, and better answers, right? Back, uh, back to your customers. And I will say, I will add there also that it makes it less complex. If you imagine you have a vector database and you have the data, then is stored in lots of different places. Now it becomes very complex. Oh, I get this data back. Well, I need to now join this with this operational store, pick this data out of this lake, pick this data out of this warehouse. And instead now you join with one place, right? And you get the results. Yeah, it's a tremendous simplifying capability that, that you all are, are providing and that we are jointly providing to, to our customers. So. I, I appreciate you spending the time with me, Tobias. Uh, you are a fantastic uh, Dell partner. Uh, this generative AI thing is pretty excited and, and uh, I look forward to having you back when we can talk some more about some of this RAG stuff that you got coming out. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Travis. Yeah, thank you. And thank you everybody for joining yet another episode. We'll catch you next time.